Welcome to today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Bit of an unusual episode today because James has wanted to cover a topic which could be seen as a bit controversial, but also very useful to people. One of our most asked questions is, how do you find a good bike fitter near you? And the truth is that not all bike fits are created equal. Over to you. So what's brought this video on is that we get asked a lot about how are you gonna choose a bike fitter? Uh, we see quite a lot of people come through here who have had bike fits and sometimes the, the results are quite alarming. Don't get me wrong, this isn't about self elevation. This is really about giving you the tools to help choose the right bike fitter for you. It's worth noting that in the UK, there are more bike fitters than there are in the whole of Europe combined. Bike fitting in the UK, it's become a well-renowned mechanism for selling people stuff. And we have big American bike brands to thank for this for the most part. Uh, we won't mention any names because it'd be unfair on specialized. Basically, it, it's this sort of cookie cutter, processed, predetermined bike fit. It's kind of like measure the feet, sell a shoe, measure the arches, sell a footbed, measure the sit bones, sell a saddle. Whereas bike fitting isn't really like about that. It's about understanding a rider's needs and limitations rather than just aimlessly, endlessly selling them stuff to try and solve their problems. For example, things like saddle issues being solved by changing the saddle. Saddle issues aren't caused by saddles, typically speaking. Here's your kind of crash course on how to choose the right bike fitter, or at least what alarm bells should start going off when you're looking at bike fitters. So generally speaking, it's good to strike up a conversation with your bike fitter before you potentially book a session with them to get a bit of an understanding of their overall experience because ultimately that's what this is all about. It's all about an ex it's all about the, the fitter's experience. And I think the first thing uh, or first blunder that we see in bike fitting is a reliance upon technology. We use a lot of tech in here, but it's used as a means of quantifying changes rather than dictating them. There are a number of systems out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're being used correctly. Anybody can buy a piece of equipment and start using it. The technology doesn't dictate the quality of the fit. It's a bit like judging a mechanic on the spanners that they use. You fundamentally need to have some knowledge and understanding to back it up. So, you know, this very expensive jig, you know, it's what wonderful presence, but it doesn't get the results. I do, or Lee does, or Andy does. So, it's important to have a fitter that has a knowledge and an understanding and some experience to back up all of the things that they're doing. We certainly see a lot of the time with a certain very popular motion capture system of the fitter saying, well, this is the optimal leg extension, so it must be correct. That doesn't really work like that. Humans aren't, human beings aren't comprised of your know, angles and numbers. Have a conversation with your fitter, get an understanding of how long they've been doing it? How many fits have they done? What qualifications do they have? What experiences do they have? And ultimately you want to try and understand, are they using the technology to get the result or are they using the technology as the tool that it's intended to be? So some alarm bells that might go off if uh, if you talk to a bike fitter and they're starting to use certain methods. So the first one that really should be a bit of a red flag is uh, near the pedal spindle. Okay, this is essentially where they drop a plumb line off of some point in the, in the knee, either the patella or the tibial tuberosity, and at a certain point in the pedal stroke, it should inter intersect with the pedal axle. There's basically no science, science behind this whatsoever. It was a rule of thumb, rudimentary method for setting saddle setback back in the 1970s. That's where it originated from. And frankly, that's where it belongs. Anybody using this method mm, isn't really taking into consideration hip function, weight distribution, reach to the handlebars, because this is fundamentally how, what, what uh, saddle setback inf uh, influences. Something else to consider is goniometry. Goniometry is the measuring of body angles, of joint angles. And we can either do it statically, which is a bit of a no-no because it's not, it's not carried out dynamically, or we can carry out dynamically using video analysis. We do that here a little bit to a certain extent, but we, again, we, we don't, we're not dictated by the angles. So again, if you've got someone who is using something like this, this is a goniometer, to measure joint angles and saying, well, this is the right angle for you, mm, red flag. Okay, what we're looking for in, in cycling and what we're looking for in saddle height is smoothness, fluidity, and quality of motion, not the quantity. Because if you consider that certain people, different people are able to extend their legs in different ways. You know, people who have high, greater levels of flexibility are able to extend their legs more than people who don't. So just adhering to one angle doesn't really work. One of the biggest blunders that we see in bike fitting is single sided analysis. So it's quite common to see like a jig like this or a turbo trainer and you know you walk in it's got all this 
it has this presence, but it's pushed up against the wall. The jig or the turbo train is pushed up against the wall and the bike fitter films the right side. Now, as we've talked in talked about in many videos in the past, most riders are right, most people, most human beings are right side dominant, so when the saddle is set too high, they list off to the right hand side. This is why most knee pain, saddle sores, and you know, other issues occur in the left leg. So if you're analyzing just the right just the right leg, you're getting like a, a sugar-coated perspective of, of how the ride is actually functioning. So ultimately we should be looking at dual-sided analysis at least. We actually film all four all four sides uh, in here. So so you need to get a bigger picture of how a ride is actually physically interacting with the bicycle. Another outdated method is aligning the center of the cleat or the pedal axle with the ball of the foot. So quite often what we'll, what, uh, we'll do is we'll mark the ball of the foot on the shoe and you align the center of the cleat, which is also the center of the pedal axle, with that ball of the foot. If you do that, you will get foot problems, knee problems, and probably saddle issues too. Uh, the much more modern way of doing it is to take the cleat a little bit further back than that. So again, this is, this is something that should be a bit of an alarm bell. Flag. Something else to be wary of is, is, is an obsessive nature. So we've been led to believe in bike fitting that it's about scrutinizing over millimeters. Now, you're taller in the morning when you wake up than when you go to bed at night. So obsessing over millimeters in something like saddle height, for example, frankly, is a bit of a waste of time. Two or three millimeters isn't going to make a difference to your functionality, particularly with regards to saddle height. We have the British Cycling Marginal Gains uh, marketing complex to, to thank for this. So, three millimeters in saddle height, particularly for example, is the difference between sitting here and sitting here. In fact, actually, more often than not, what you'll probably see more is is just a change or a shift in the amount of pressure. So, game, the bike fitting is a game of inches not millimeters the aim is to get a rider within a uh, within a window and, and allow them to adapt adapt to it rather than obsessing over millimeters there are some areas of fit where millimeters do make a difference for example cleat location but certainly when we're talking about things like saddle height and reach millimeters don't really make a difference In contrast to that, there's a complete lack of attention to the detail side of it as well so for example we have people coming in here who have had fits. Why are there two different pedals on here? Attention to detail. <laughs> like, we have people coming through here where they pay for a professional fit and the fitter hasn't even looked at their shoes. So a bike fit really should cover every part of your interaction with the bicycle. Every fit here starts with uh, an interview. There's a standing evaluation. There's a foot assessment. There's a physical assessment, understanding hip, uh, just general lower, body, uh, lower limb mobility. We then assess cleat location, arch support, shoe fit, saddle height, saddle setback, saddle pitch, saddle choice, crank length, stance width, reach, handlebar drop, handlebar width. You should be considering every aspect of your interaction with the bike. You know, if you touch the bike, it should be considered. To kind of summarize, it, it, I, I get emails, I get a lot of emails from people saying, can I recommend a bike fitter? And ultimately, I never make recommendations for other fitters anymore. I used to once upon a time, and, and I, did it, I did it for a couple of individuals, and they came back to me with really bad results, and it reflected really badly on me. So, and this isn't about me saying, you need to fly here, you'd be most welcome, but, it is difficult to, for me to recommend fitters because I don't, I don't know these people personally a lot of the time. Um, there are certainly names out there that I can recommend, but they're, they're in certain locations, they're in specific locations. Things to be aware of though is, I mean, I would typically be, be wary of bike fitters that reside in bike shops because there's usually a commercial element to it in the sense that they're, they're pushed to make money, they're pushed to sell product. None of my guys are. And it's usually good to work with specialists. So look for individuals or look for businesses that specialize in bike fitting. That, that is all that they do. Uh, or at least that's the main thing that they do. That's the core of their business. Because individuals that focus on bike fitting are gonna do a better job because it's, it's what they do. It's also worth looking at the education level of your fitter. Uh, you know, how, how many courses have they been on? So for example, if we look, if, we, if you consider experience, if you've got someone who's done 10,000 bike fits and they've only done it using one methodology, it's probably not as good quality as someone who's done 5,000 bike fits with 10 different accreditations because they've got a much broader knowledge and a broader understanding of many different ways of treating the same thing. To give you a story, 10 years ago or, or more, I, I went on every bike fitting course that there was 
and eventually realized, came to realize some years later that they're all kind of the same thing. The systematization of, of bike fitting, of measuring saddle height, then setback, then, you know, it, it's all very heavily systemati systematized and processed. The outcome was usually pretty much preordained. Ask them fitter, ask them about what education they've got, how, how many accreditations have they, have they had. Look on YouTube, look at Google reviews. Uh, these, are good, these are usually good measures of whether you're gonna get a good result from a business. I think ultimately most bike fitters who you're thinking about booking with should be more than happy to have a conversation with you about any concerns that you might have. Bike fitting requires quite a broad knowledge base. You need a number, you know, relatively basic understanding of the body, but almost more importantly, you need a really good understanding of product and, and its effectiveness and how well it interacts with a human. This is where quite a lot of physio bike fitting falls flat on its face because you'll end up trying to treat a customer with a shoe that's two sizes too big and doesn't fit and, get, and who's getting knee pain no amount of stretching or physiotherapy is going to stop that from occurring if you've got a shoe that causes the problems. So you need to have an understanding of, of the product as well as as well as the body. Why well, don't you Google look up bite fit on oh <laughs> how was that at the top? Did she pay for that? Viewers, we're trying to figure out how we can recommend that you get you find a bike fitter near you. And I think in conclusion, just fly to me. I'll sort it out for you. If you come to us and you have a fit and you still have problems, you can come back for free. Which is, sucks actually if you have to fly here from the other side of the world, but sorry. Mm -hmm.